Hey, good morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, welcome back to A Beacon of Light. I'm Brother Anthony. <clears throat> and today I wanted to jump into Hosea chapter 8. You know, last time you saw me, about a week ago, I was getting really sick. And I went to the doctor and I had pneumonia in my lungs. In my left lower lung. And uh, by the grace of God, I, I came out. I had to just stay down in bed for a, a few days, but God pulled me through it. You know, trusting in God to be healed, and today I get to go back to work. So, right now, it is Tuesday, January 28th. It is 5.24 a.m. So, let's jump right into the Word. I hope everybody's doing well. And uh, what better way to start your morning than jumping into God's Word. You know, I read something the other day. It talked about God's Word being living and powerful. Hebrews 4.12 You know, there, there are times when I read a chapter and I really don't have anything to say. But the thing that matters most is that God's Word is being spoken. God's word is being read. God's word is being heard. No, it's not Anthony's voice or comment or or my words that are going to lead you to the one who saves you. It is God's word that is going to lead you to the one who saves you from your sins. You know, the the word is going to testify of Jesus Christ. The word is going to testify of the goodness that we get when we follow our Lord. Or the penalty that we receive if we turn our backs on Him. So you see, God's word is, is number one. God's word is most important. That's why it is important for you to get to your Bible. Right here I have a New King James Version. Uh, New King James Study Bible, and uh, I just read from there, because this is the best thing to read God's Word. Don't listen to my opinion, listen to God's opinion. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. The Apostasy of Israel, chapter 8, verse 1, set the trumpet to your mouth, he shall come like an eagle against the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed my covenant and rebelled against my law. Israel will cry to me, My God, we know you. Israel has rejected the good. The enemy will pursue him. They set up kings, but not by me. They made princes, but I did not acknowledge them. From their silver and gold, they made idols for themselves, that they might be cut off. Your calf is rejected, O Samaria. My anger is aroused against them. How long until they attain to innocence? For from Israel is even this. A workman made it, and it is not God. But the calf of Samaria shall be broken to pieces. They sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. The stalk has no bud. It shall never produce meal. If it should produce, aliens would swallow it up. Israel is swallowed up. Now they are among the Gentiles, like a vessel in which is no pleasure. For they have gone up to Assyria like a wild donkey alone by itself. Ephraim has hired lovers. Yes, though they have hired among the nations, now I will gather them, and they shall sorrow a little, because of the burden of the king of princes. Because Ephraim has made many altars for sin, they have become for him altars for sinning. I have written for him the great things of my law, but that they, but they 
were considered a strange thing. For the sacrifices of my offerings, they sacrifice flesh and eat it. But the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. They shall return to Egypt. For Israel has forgotten his maker and has built temples. Judah also has multiplied fortified cities, but I will send fire upon his cities, and it shall devour his palaces. Um, this is some really deep stuff, and I think a lot of it pertains to today. Um, we'll go ahead and break down a, a few of these verses. <coughs> like I said, God's word is final. God's word is true. God's word is living. God's word is powerful. God's word will separate even from soul, from soul and spirit, from bone and marrow, and is a discerner of the heart. You see that in Hebrews 4.12. So, Hosea chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. <coughs> Just as an eagle swiftly swoops down and snatches its prey, so Assyria would invade Israel and take its people into captivity. The house of the Lord refers to the entire land of Israel. It says here, in verse 2, Israel will cry to me, My God, we know you. Though Israel claimed to acknowledge the Lord's authority, it had violated his covenant and rejected the qualities the Lord regarded as good, such as justice, loyalty, and humility. You know, um, there's a lot of people in, in the world today who claim that they are Christian, yet they forget to follow the precepts and the, uh, the qualities, like it says here, uh, it had violated his covenant and rejected the qualities the Lord regarded as good. You know, and we see a lot of that with uh, a lot in our culture, you know, with homosexuality, with uh, people fighting with one another, killing each other. You know, a lot of things in, uh, in, uh, in our society that uh, go against God's word, you know, and uh and that's when, as we look at the, the New Testament, you know, uh, there's that story where uh, the servant said, Lord, we, we prophesied in your name. We've done many miracles in your name. And he's going to be like, you know what? I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness. I never knew you. You know, I, I gave you a, a command to do something. You never followed it. I don't want to have nothing to do with you. And that's the scariest thing. To. To hear. When we get to those. To that judgment realm. Is to get away from me. I never knew you. Verse 4. They set up kings. But not by me. They made princes. But I did not acknowledge them. From their silver and gold. They made idols for themselves. That they might be cut off. Your calf is rejected, O Samaria. My anger is aroused against them. How long until they attain to innocence? For from Israel is even this. I'm going to read verse 6 too. A workman made it, but it is not God. The f they set up kings. This phrase alludes to the political turmoil surrounding the throne of the northern kingdom during the 8th century BC when four kings were assassinated during a 20 year period. Hosea chapter 7 verse 4 through 7. If the capital city Samaria stands for the northern kingdom in general, the reference here may be to the calf idols made by Jeroboam in 1 Kings 12:28. In verse 6, it says, A workman made it, and it is not God. Hosea reasoned 
that anything that is made with human hands cannot possibly qualify as God. What does God tell us time and time again in the Old Testament? You shall not worship any other thing but me. You shall not make any carved image of anything in heaven or anything in earth, but the true worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. You know, uh, we talked about God being a jealous God. God does not like you bowing down to a statue. God does not like you worshiping the cross. The cross is a reminder. The cross is a reminder, but we're not to sit there and bow down to it. We're supposed to bow down to God in spirit and in truth. We're not supposed to carve up things and, and make things. I'm not going to go around and say, this is my God. You know, this is my cookie jar, but this is not my God. You know, I'm not going to sit here and worship this. Something that man made. Like it says here, a workman made it, and it is not God. So let's go down to verse 11. Because Ephraim has made many altars for sin, they have become for him altars for sinning. I have written for him the great things of my law, but they were considered a strange thing. For the sacrifices of my offerings, they sacrifice flesh and eat it. But the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. They shall return to Egypt. They shall return to captivity. They shall return to the pit that they were in because they continually turn their back on me. You know, how many times are we going to turn our back on God? And yes, we may all think because God is such a loving God that he's going to continually forgive us of our sins. Don't forget that God does have wrath. God does get angry. God has set a time and a place for us to be judged on the things that we did and the things that we didn't do. When we die, I believe that we're going to come in contact with that judgment. What are you going to be judged for today? Are you worshiping things that sh you shouldn't worship other than God? Are you putting a person or a, or a place or an object in front of the, your Lord and Savior? Are you putting addiction or, or, or pornography or, or any other sin in front of worshiping God? What are you doing that's putting God on the back burner? You know, he's, he, I believe that, yes, he will forgive you if you repent of your sins. But if you keep sinning and keep making him a mockery, that he's going to judge you for it. Like it says here, now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. They shall return to Egypt. They shall return to Egypt. He's going to return you to Egypt. And make sure that you are back in bondage. So you know. Life is better on God's side of the fence. Life is better when we serve God. Life is better when we let God know. And show God. That we love him. That we're ready. That we're mature. That we're in his word. That we're believing with our heart. Everything that comes out of here. Because I know I don't want to be judged. I don't want to be the one where he says, get away from me, Anthony. I never knew you. Get away from me, boy. No, I want to be there. I want to worship him in heaven. You know. <laughs> and that's pretty much all I have today for Hosea chapter 8. You remember, always get into your word. Read the word yourself. So that you can gain a better understanding and find your identity in Christ. So God bless you, brothers and sisters. 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, get these kids up and then get to work. God bless.